Okay, so I'm cutting away using the same old tools with a two pixel feather using the lasso. Now I'm cutting away from these rhino legs. And you might get a sense while you're doing this that things need to be a little off. So I might even grab this leg, which feels a little bit too far down, right? And I might use my move tool just to move that into a place I think is better. And I can transform it. I can go image, free trans, or uh, sorry, edit, free transform. And I can warp it or distort it. I want to thicken its top a little bit. There we go. So that kind of works better with the anatomy that I'm thinking of. Because I'm looking at all the components together. And I want to do that before I cut it out fully because I only want to cut out what I need to. And again, you don't need to be zoomed in very much. I'm not even at 100%. Okay, I want to get all of it. But the problem is, without zooming in to at least 100%, I might be a little off. Now there's this piece of grass here, which is terrible, but I'll show you how to fix that later with a new tool. Because there will be debris, there's like little grass at the toes of these feet, that kind of thing. Speaking of the feet, I can go ahead and do those. They're on top of everything, but do this one first. Cut them out, see what I can get. I haven't even blended them to yet, but first we start with external edges, and then we can go to color correction and the internal edge. Now, I like this trick. Because I've ringed around the foot, I can delete it from this layer. And then I can also just move that selection down to my bison layer and remove it from that as well. So it goes right back to the gray. And I know I have a perfect overlap now with what's behind it, right? So it will blend up here where it matters. Now the next foot. Use my lasso with a two pixel feather. I think it's the feather that that can make photo P have a little bit of trouble processing the lasso. Because even in Photoshop, feathering's a little different, but it can take quite a bit of processing. Okay, and then I'm going to move that selection down here, delete it. Then I should have plenty of overlap. I don't have a lot, but I have some. And I got grass I got to take care of. Remember you can use your move tool with auto select on just to to not just move your layers but also select them. If I want a little bit more overlap here I can always free transform it. Edit free transform. That's because I have a selection active so I need to deselect. Command D can do that. Get to the right layer. You can also lock layers if that's helpful. And then say, edit, free transform. And I'm going to hold down shift and just make this larger. 
It's good to have textures to help seam everything together. I can even right click inside, just warp it and just tug it out a little bit on this side. So it goes all the way around. Okay, now this is a much softer texture. So how do I cut it out? I invent with my lasso the edge of the hair that I want. And then I'm using that feather and it will soften it for me. So I have more control. Same thing at edges like this. I can, these are internal edges, but I can find that edge myself and use feather. But with internal edges, it can be nicer just use eraser tools. Okay, now getting around to the external edge of the snout here. It's mainly this reference. It's got to come out. Of the white fur. And this is the difference between, you know, tearing or using scissors for collage and carefully using an exacto knife and cutting kind of meticulously. That's what we're doing. But we have the advantage of softening it a little bit with those feather settings. Whoops. Now that trick, I can apply that to these other layers as well. Like to get this outside edge deleted. But I want to be careful. There might be something I don't want to delete there, but I think I'm good so far. Zoom in. Command D to deselect. See what layers are affected. Might even move this one just out slightly. About there. Come on. I think my eye is already good. So now this part, the outside edge. So this is almost all the same background, so I can try magic wand. It will keep the same pixel feathering. I can hold down shift and add to it. But I might need to use my lasso to add things in or hold down option and delete things from the selection to subtract them from the selection because the magic wand can get a little over uh, enthusiastic. Okay, let's try it. How's that look? And then another delete just for the feather. That's pretty good. And now I can clean up the stuff around it. Just like so. Now this green reflection is really weird because there's no green anywhere else, but that's still part of that. So I'm going to show you how we can change that color with some, some tools later. But I still need that silhouette. So this is helping you kind of get used to all of those nuances. Okay, then there's this outside edge of this ear.
Bring this back. Lasso around that. And then I'll feather it a little bit. And then there's this top edge. So this is exactly what Betsy was talking about. I have yeah. this fur on this dark reference. So instead of trying to go in with my lasso and getting each fur, each space, and deleting it out <laughs> on my chin curtain layer like that, that doesn't look very good. So instead, I'm going to use Magic Wand, and I'm going to have the tolerance really as high as I ever have it, which is at 32 at contiguous with the anti-alias turned on. I'm going to click, and then I'm going to hold down Shift and try to get all the kind of variations on it. I can even try unchecking contiguous and clicking. So you're, you're holding down uh, shift. Shift, and then are you using one of your mouse clicks too? Yes. So each time I click, it's clicking on a different ah. dark pixel. Okay. And so by adding shift, it's also adding any that are close to that one that I... Nice. So what you can see is it's selected not only the outside, but also some of these, they're called undercuts that are self-contained. Now, the problem with having feather is it's going to smooth some of these edges, right? But that's ultimately good. So then when I hit delete, it will get rid of all of it. But that would also be ones that are inside. And that can be bad. So instead of hitting delete, this is what I do. I have the selection open with the feather, but then I go to my eraser tool. And I use the selection as a, a stencil. So I'm going to erase with 100% opacity. It doesn't actually matter if it's a hard eraser or a soft eraser because the feather is there. But then I just take it out only on the edges where I want to take it out. So even if internal shapes are selected like that, I just don't erase over them. Yeah, that works a lot better. And then what's great about feathering, right, is I've deleted it. I can use the magic wand again on empty space. And the computer is excellent at selecting empty space. And then I can have that feather on, and then I can bite away at it again until it feels like the right amount of translucent or soft. And I can keep doing that, basically keep giving it a haircut until I feel like it works. And this is still without color correcting. So color correcting and then some other tools we're going to use is going to help. Are going to help. All right. So let's transform that a little bit. Now that I've cut that out, I kind of know what that shape is. So I'm going to warp that top edge. Because I want that ear not to get swallowed up by it. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I've cut out, I think, yeah, all my outer edges because I moved that. Let's see, this looks like it could be cleaned up. So I'm going to go to that part of the head and then you can also find your own dividing lines, right? So sometimes to sharpen, you just find your own edge. And then I might do some internal edges with erasing the soft edge brush. Just get rid of any hard edges you don't want. Okay. Good time to save. Command S. Right, the next step is to color correct these elements and then do the internal blending. So you make sure your work is saved. You make sure you understand what the layers are doing. I definitely have more than five elements. So I'm meeting those requirements. 